Hey guys, welcome to this video about Johann Liebert's manipulation tactics, the charming and charismatic villain from the anime Monster. If you haven't watched or read the series yet, consider this your spoiler warning. Now, you might be wondering why we're talking about manipulation tactics in the first place. Well, if you've ever had a friend who always seems to get their way, or a boss who always knows how to get you to do what they want, chances are you've encountered some form of manipulation. Manipulation tactics can be used for good or for evil, and it's important to understand how they work so that we can protect ourselves from those who use them for nefarious purposes. And when it comes to manipulation, Johann Liebert is truly a master. So, let's dive into the world of Monster and explore the tactics Johann uses to bend people to his will. But be warned, you might never look at charming and charismatic people the same way again. For those who don't know, we must first understand who Johann Liebert really is. Johann is a character that is both fascinating and terrifying. He's a handsome, charismatic, and intelligent young man who can effortlessly charm anyone he meets. But beneath that charming exterior lies a manipulative and sociopathic personality. Johann was born with a twin sister, Anna, who he cared for deeply. However, he was subjected to horrific experiments at a young age that left him traumatized and with a thirst for power and control. These experiences turned Johann into a master manipulator, allowing him to exploit the fears and desires of those around him to achieve his goals. But what makes Johann so skilled at manipulation? Well, it's a combination of his intelligence, charm, and complete lack of empathy. He can read people like a book, knowing exactly what to say and do to make them trust him and do his bidding. And when things don't go his way, he's not above using threats or violence to get what he wants. It's no wonder that even those who know Johann's true nature are still drawn to him. His charisma is like a magnet, and it's hard to resist his charm. But as we'll see, falling under Johann's spell can have disastrous consequences. So, buckle up and get ready to explore the dark world of Johann Liebert's manipulation tactics. He uses a combination of emotional manipulation, gaslighting, and controlling information to gain power over his victims. Let's take a closer look at each of these tactics. First, gaslighting. Johann Liebert employs gaslighting as a deceptive technique to make his victims question their own reality. He'll twist the truth or outright lie to his victims, leaving them unsure what to believe. He frequently denies things he's said or done, making his victims feel insane. Gaslighting can be extremely detrimental to a person's mental health. It can leave them feeling befuddled, anxious, and isolated. They may begin to question their own thoughts and feelings, and even their sanity. This may make it difficult for them to make decisions or trust their own judgment, which is precisely what Johan desires. Johan manipulates his victims by using gaslighting. He can compel them into acting in a way that suits him by making them question their own reality. He might persuade them that they are the only ones who can support him or who truly comprehend him. He might also use gaslighting to make his victims distrust one another by making them wonder about the intentions and motivations of the other person. When Yoan convinces a young girl that she is not actually his sister but rather a stranger that he has kidnapped and brainwashed into believing she is his sibling, it is one of the most upsetting instances of gaslighting that has ever occurred. By gradually sowing doubt in her mind and getting her to second-guess her own memories and experiences, he then reinforces these doubts with outright lies and denials, until she's completely convinced that she's not who she thinks she is. Second, Charm and Charisma Johann Liebert employs his charisma and charm to influence those around him. Johann is naturally charismatic and endearing, which makes it simpler for him to win over people's trust and influence them to do what he wants. One of Johann's most powerful manipulative tools is his charm. People want to be around him because of his ability to be affable, charismatic, and charming. His charm makes him seem likable and trustworthy, which can cause his victims to lower their defenses and open up to him. Johan can take advantage of this by getting people to reveal their darkest insecurities and fears, which he can later use against them. Johan uses his charisma as a significant tool for social engineering. With his words, he has a way of captivating listeners and making them feel like the most significant person on earth. People may believe anything he says because of his charisma, which makes him seem assured and knowledgeable. Yoan frequently cultivates an intimate relationship with his victims by using his charm and charisma. He'll give them the impression that they are the only ones who truly comprehend him and that they have a close relationship. He can coerce his victims into actions they might not otherwise take, such as keeping secrets or cooperating with his schemes, using this intimacy. Yoan uses his charisma and charm as effective manipulative tools throughout the series. 
he is able to win the trust of his victims and manipulate them into doing his bidding by being likable, self-assured, and charismatic. It's crucial to spot other people's charisma and charm, and to be cautious of those who seem too good to be true. In the beginning of the series, Johan is able to charm his way into the life of a wealthy family by pretending to be a lost child. He uses his charisma to convince them to take him in and care for him, all while hiding his true intentions. When Johan is taken in by a wealthy businessman and his wife, he uses his charm to make himself indispensable to them. He ingratiates himself to them by doing household chores and running errands, and he uses this closeness to manipulate them into doing his bidding. Yohan's charisma is also evident when he becomes a popular politician's campaign manager. He's able to rally the public behind the politician, convincing them that he's the right man for the job. In reality, Yohan is using the politician as a means to achieve his own ends. Third, creating a sense of dependency. One of Johan Liebert's key manipulation tactics is to create a sense of dependency in his victims. He accomplishes this by making himself seem indispensable to them and by making it seem as though they must depend on him in order to survive. Once he's created this sense of dependence, he can use it to control his victims and get them to do what he wants. Johan can instill dependence in a number of ways. Giving his victims support and understanding on an emotional level is one strategy. He will listen to their problems, show empathy, and provide counsel, which may give his victims the impression that he is the only one who truly comprehends them. This forges a bond between them that his victims may find challenging to sever. Another way that Johan creates a sense of dependency is by providing his victims with material support. He may make them feel as though they owe him something by offering them food, money, or shelter. Johan becomes the dominant party in this power dynamic, and his victims become subordinate to him. Johan is also adept at making his victims feel vulnerable so that they become dependent on him. He will take advantage of their anxieties and insecurities to make them believe that they are dependent on him for protection. When Johan puts his victims in a situation where they feel like they have no other options, this can be especially powerful. Johan creates a sense of dependency in a young boy named Dieter by taking him in and providing him with food and shelter. He also becomes a father figure to the boy, which makes it difficult for Dieter to resist his influence. Johan creates a sense of dependency in a man named Richard Braun by offering him material support. He offers to pay for Braun's surgery, which creates a power dynamic where Braun feels like he owes Johan a debt. Overall, Johan is skilled at creating a sense of dependency in his victims. By making himself appear indispensable to them, he's able to manipulate them into doing what he wants. Fourth, playing on people's fears and insecurities. Johan Liebert is a master manipulator who is skilled at finding the right buttons to press. Playing on people's fears and insecurities while taking advantage of their vulnerabilities is one of his primary manipulation strategies. When the victim is already weak, such as when they are dealing with a difficult situation or personal problems, this can be especially effective. Johan has a variety of ways to capitalize on people's anxieties and insecurities. Exploiting their worst fears is one method. Using this knowledge, he will induce fear and uncertainty in his victims, making them believe that they are in danger. When Johan puts his victims in a situation where they feel like they have no other options, this can be especially powerful. Johan also takes advantage of people's feelings of guilt or shame to prey on their fears and insecurities. He will use this information to convince his victims that they are at fault or that they owe him money. This might result in a situation where Johan holds the power and his victims are attempting to make amends. Johan is also adept at exploiting people's insecurities. He will identify their weaknesses and play on them to undermine their confidence or cause them to question who they are. When Yohan is trying to persuade his victims to do something they are unsure of, this can be especially persuasive. Yohan plays on the fears of a young girl named Nina by convincing her that her family is in danger. He tells her that her father is a dangerous criminal and that her family is being targeted by the police. This creates a sense of fear and uncertainty in Nina, which Yohan then uses to manipulate her into doing what he wants. Fifth, controlling information. Another key tactic that Johan Liebert uses to manipulate people is by controlling the information they receive. Johan Liebert frequently manipulates people by limiting the information they are exposed to. He is able to influence his victims' perceptions of the world and their behavior by having control over what they know or don't know. Sharing only certain information with his victims is one way Johan manipulates information. He will provide them with just enough details to pique their interest or curiosity but not enough to fully inform them of the circumstances. This may give his victims the impression that they are in the dark and increase their reliance on Johan. Johan also actively suppresses information in order to maintain control over it. He actively works to keep his victims from learning the truth or will actively keep them in the dark about certain details of a situation. This may cause his victims to feel uncertain or confused 
which Johan then uses to manipulate them. Johan is also adept at controlling the media and exploiting it for his own gain. In order to achieve his objectives, he will spread false information, fabricate stories, or use his connections to shape how events are reported. He can influence his victims' informational intake and how they perceive their surroundings by exerting control over the media. Yoan selectively shares information with Tenma, the protagonist of the series, to keep him interested in his plans. He'll hint at a larger conspiracy or a deeper truth, but never give Tenma the full story. This creates a sense of intrigue and keeps Tenma dependent on Yoan for information. Yoan actively suppresses information about himself and his past, making it difficult for anyone to truly understand who he is or what his motivations are. This creates creates a sense of mystery around Johan, which he then uses to manipulate those around him. Consequences of Johan Liebert's Manipulation Tactics First, damage to victims. The manipulation of Johan's victims frequently results in long-term psychological harm. They might struggle with paranoia, distrust, and feelings of betrayal. Some victims become dependent on Johan or develop a Stockholm Syndrome-like bond with him, making it difficult for them to break free from his control. Others may become suicidal or even homicidal as a result of Johan's influence. Second, impact on society. Johan's manipulation tactics can have a ripple effect on society. He can destabilize groups of people and even entire nations by instilling a sense of fear, and uncertainty. His strategies have the potential to foster a climate of mistrust and paranoia where people are constantly on the lookout for cunning and deceit. As trauma and mistrust are passed down from one generation to the next, the harm caused by Johann's manipulation may not be fully repaired for several generations. Conclusion: Johann Liebert may be a fictional character, but his manipulation tactics are all too real. From gaslighting to playing on people's fears and insecurities, Johann knows how to get inside people's heads and control their actions. But the consequences of his tactics are devastating. His victims suffer from long-term emotional damage, and society as a whole suffers from the erosion of trust and the spread of misinformation. That's why it's so important to understand and protect against manipulation tactics. So if you ever find yourself questioning your own memory, feeling overly dependent on someone else, or second-guessing your own judgment, take a step back and ask yourself if you're being manipulated. We hope this video has been informative and helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on our latest videos. Thank you for watching. Until next time.